Good afternoon, good afternoon, faith community. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. A wonderful time. It's a wonderful spirit and energy uh, that we can have today to uh, worship the Lord and come to the Lord and worship together and pray together corporately and grow together in the spirit together. Um, I'm blessed to be here. I'm blessed to see you guys. Um, I'm blessed to even know that we have people who are online worshiping as well. Uh, today, if you could uh, stand on your feet, and we are going to uh, read the word of God, and then after that, we'll follow that up with prayer. Today, the scripture is going to come from John chapter 4, verses 19 through 26. And the scripture reads as, Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, Believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and now has come and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. As we go to prayer, God, we thank you on this day, God, for another day, God. God, on this day, God, we thank you just for your spirit, God. We thank you for your presence, God. We thank you for your presence and your grace and your goodness, God. We thank you for the ability to worship, God. And God, we don't only worship for what you can do for us, God. But we worship you, God, because you are ruler, because you are sovereign, God. God, we worship you because you decided to love us anyway, God. We worship you, God, because through all of our, our failures and all of our shortcomings, God, all of the times in which we've turned away from you, God, you still sought after our hearts, God. And you still reached down, God, to get us, God. God, allow us to carry that spirit, God. Allow us to take that energy, God, and allow us to spread it amongst your people, God. God, we thank you on this day, God, and we thank you for, for joy. God, we thank you because sometimes we take joy for granted, and I'm not talking about happiness, God. I'm talking about joy, God. I'm talking about being content in your spirit, God. Yes, God. God, allow us to dwell in a joy that can only come from you, God. Yes, God. God, for we know, God, that this joy that comes from you is eternal, God. There's some substance to this joy, God. This isn't a joy that passes away. This isn't a joy that can be taken away, God. And for that, God, I thank you, God. Yes, God. Thank, thank you for eternal joy, thank you, God. God. Thank you, God. May this joy, God, fill our hearts. May it fill our spirits, God, so that yes. when we go out into the world, people can see us. Yes, God. And they say, what, what do I need to do in order to feel that, God? Yes. That joy isn't absent of, of circumstance. That joy isn't absent of tribulations and trials, God. But that joy comes from that, God. That joy is built from those circumstances, God, from knowing the fact or, as your word just said, God, the truth that you are with us at all times, yes, God. Yes, God, may we rest in that, God. May we rest in your comfort or in the comfort of your grace, God. Yes, God. May we slow down, God. May we slow down in our lives, God. May we slow down as we walk, as we move, as we breathe, God. May we just inhale and exhale. God, may we inhale and exhale. And may that breath, God, be a symbol of our worship to you, God, yes, God. because you didn't have to give it to us. God, this could be the last prayer that we have. 
God, this could be our last opportunity to worship you, God. Don't let us take it for granted, God. Yes, God. God, may every time we worship, may we worship as if it is the last time, God. Yes, God. May we cherish, God, mm. your comfort. May we cherish your spirit, God. May we not take you for granted, God. Mm. God, we need you. We love you. We trust you, God. And we ask these things, God, only in your name because nobody else can do it. Only in your name, God, because nobody else is capable of doing it, God. Yes, God. Only on in your name, God, because nobody else would even want to do it, God, but you do. <laughs> so we ask these things in your spirit, in your name, God. In your Jesus. We pray. Yes. Amen. How you all came in here to give God worship? Now, I know y'all can do better than that. How many of you all came in to give God your praise? He just said, if this is your last moment to give some worship, you came here to give him your all. How do you all know that God is an awesome God? He's an awesome wonder. He's a provider. He's the only one whose grace is sufficient. He's a healer, a deliverer. Hallelujah. Let's help me out. Say provider. Provider. Defender. Defender. Say master of. Master of the universe. You know me. You know me. Say you are. You are an awesome. Wonder. Wonder. Say provider. Provider. Defender. Defender. Master of the universe. Master of the universe. Say you know me. You know me. Say you are, you are an awesome wonder, wonder. say oh, oh, what a wonder you are, what a wonder you are, say oh, oh, oh. oh. say you are, you are an awesome wonder, wonder. say oh, 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 what a wonder you You know me. You know me. My weakness. My weakness. You know just where I hurt the you most. You know just where I hurt the most. That's why. That's why. I call you healer. I call you healer. Hallelujah. 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 Say you know me. You know me. My weakness. My weakness. You know just where. You know just where I hurt. So that's why, that's why we yeah, call yeah. you healer. We call you healer. Now everybody sing, say, oh, oh, oh. oh what a healer you are. What a healer you are. Say, oh, oh, oh. say you are an awesome, you are an awesome healer. healer. Oh, oh, oh. Say you rule, you rule the heavens and the earth. In my life, say you are, you are an awesome ruler. Say it again. Say your kingdom, your kingdom is established. Say you rule, you rule the heavens and the earth. Say in my life.
give you our glory. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, Hallelujah. Yeah. God, we thank you for being you, God. God, we thank you for loving Hallelujah. us, God. Through it all, God. God, we need you, God. We want you, God. And we want you for who you are, God. I need you, glory. I want your glory, less of me and more of you is what I need. Yeah. Top to one. Show me your glory yeah. Yeah. and show me your power, yeah. less of me and more of you is what I need. I need your glory, I want your glory, less of me and more of you is what I need, show me your glory, and show me your power. Less of me and more of you is what I need. And so many times I stray away, rejecting your love and your warm embrace. I realize I need you more and more each day. I need your glory. Lord, I want your, I want your glory. Give me less of me, less of me, and more of you. Cause that's what Lord, I, need. I need. Show me, show me your glory. Yeah, yeah. Show me your, show me your power. Oh, let it rain on me, less of me, and more. And so many times I strayed away, rejecting your love and your warm embrace. I realize I need you more and more each day. I need your I need glory. Your Lord, I want your glory. I want your glory. Take me away, God. And put you, God, cause you're all I need. Show me, yeah. Show me your power. Give me less of me, God. Less of me and 
let go of it all to worship to worship you I live to worship you I live I live to worship you we're going to say it again no matter where you are you can drop everything to worship you I live to worship you I live, I live to worship you. You don't have to be on key. You don't have to be on beat. It has everything to do with your heart turned to his. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live, I live to worship you. If you have no words to say, you can say, oh. the Holy Spirit moves and moans and groans, then what can God do with our O? Can we just cry out with one voice and O? just yeah, cry yeah, out yeah, and say, yeah, oh, yeah. from at the top of our lungs, oh, 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 no music, yeah, just yeah, voices. Yeah.
As we repair and turn from sin, revival in smoldering, breath of God, fan us into flame. And you sing, we need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven, pour your spirit out. For hearts that burn with holy feet, pure. 
Come on, right where you are, right? This is a moment, this is an opportunity for us to just reflect on the beauty of our Savior. I dare you to just lift your hands where you are and begin to worship God. Come on, if you're believing God for a fresh wind, if you don't know what a fresh wind is, that's just a fancy way of saying, Lord, breathe on us. This is an opportunity for the Lord to breathe on you, for his presence to breathe on you, for him to breathe his word. Come on, take advantage of this moment. Worship God. Father, you're awesome. Hallelujah. God, you're worthy. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Fresh wind. Hallelujah. Breathe on us, God. Hallelujah. Wonderful Savior. Y'all, we can't miss the moment. You know, the only second promise to us is the one that just passed. But for the blood bought right now, we have an opportunity that in spite of your feelings, in spite of your circumstances, no matter what's going on around you, you have an opportunity to lift your hands, lift your voice, and worship God. Father, you're awesome. Father, you're worthy. Hallelujah. We magnify you, God. We bless you in this place. You tell us, God, that the hour is here where true worshipers must worship you in spirit and in truth. So today, God, we lift our hands. We lift our voices, God. We lift our hearts unto you. Father, be glorified. Father, be glorified. Hallelujah. We worship you, King. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, King. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, King. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, King. To worship you, I live. <laughs> to worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Hallelujah. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. Hallelujah. Oh. God together, sing it. Oh, 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 oh.
we bless you, God. today, God, we declare it, that there's none like you. We can search, Lord, throughout all eternity, but we know, God, that there's none like you. We belong to you. All the glory is yours. Manifest your love in this place, God. Hallelujah. There's none like you, God. belong to you. Father, as we pray today, we want to just to acknowledge the fact that you're God. And you being God is not predicated upon what we think or how we feel or what we do or what we have or what we're able to make happen. We just acknowledge the fact that you're God and because you're God, we declare it today, Lord, that you are good all the time and all the time you are good. God, you are Alpha and Omega beginning in the end, first and the last, all things in between. God, we're thankful today Lord, that you swallow up our worry, God, and produce praise. We're thankful today, God, that our mind belongs to you. We're thankful today that you are smothering our hearts with your spirit. God, that you are calling us into relationship with you. We're thankful today that nothing that happens around us determines or takes the temperature of our worship because it belongs to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, you deserve the glory, hallelujah. You deserve the honor, you deserve the praise. And today, we give it to you. Father, you're awesome, you're worthy, hallelujah. You're perfect, God, hallelujah. You are just, you are king, you are in control, hallelujah fresh wind. Breathe on your people. Hallelujah. Thank you for not taking your hands off of us, God. You're awesome, awesome, awesome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, you're worthy. Father, you're worthy. There's nothing we can do to deserve you, but you choose to be in relationship with us. So today, to you, our Father, we shout thank you. We bless you. We bless you. 
We honor your sweet name. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for receiving us. God, you're perfect. It's in your name we pray and we say thank you. Amen. Y'all, where we are, can we celebrate God today? I'm talking about celebrating to him and here's it. Can we bless him with our hands today? Can we bless him with our voices and say hallelujah? Can we give God a dynamic praise today because he's worth it? Hallelujah. 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 God, you're worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, you're awesome. Some may think that it don't take all that. Can we move on? Honestly, you're right. It don't take all this. It take more. And we just don't have enough hands, enough feet, a lot, enough voice, Mike Williams, to really let God know how great he is. But since I don't have enough voice, I'm going to use the one I got. Since my feet just don't move quite right, Michaela, can I use yours? Right? I don't mind running. D David, you want? can we run, David? We ain't even got to run on beat. Let's just run a little bit. Take advantage of the space that we have to give God what's due him. You say it don't take all that. You right. You right. But sometimes I just got to run a little bit. And look, I can't dance, but my brother will. I can't dance. But my brother, hey, hallelujah. God, you're worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, you're worthy. Hallelujah. Awesome, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, my dance partner's going to dance with me. Hallelujah. I can't dance, but hey, God is worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the honor. He's worthy. Hallelujah of our praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, you're worthy. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. We magnify you, King. You're worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, grab your Bibles. Hallelujah. Grab your Bibles. John 4. Let's go. John 4. Grab your Bibles. Hallelujah. Bless you, God. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Baker, we can't make this stuff up. Isn't God good? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. BJ, we can't make it if we try. <laughs> what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. 
we serve. I'm glad to know, Christina, that there's nothing like him. Sister Georgette, I'm glad to know that regardless to what we do, Mike, I'm going to tell you something, God never takes his hands off his people. And that's why I'm just like, you know what? While we're here, we might as well praise him. While we're here, we might as well give him glory. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Lord, it's obvious to us today that in our hearts you desire to work. Lord, today we acknowledge your power on the inside that it will be displayed on the outside. Father, that all around us will know that we believe you. We believe your word. And our prayer, God, is that you will get our attention. May we hear you clearly. May you speak today. Challenge our rhythms. Challenge our hearts. Challenge our thinking that we will be more like you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. John 4. John 4, beginning at verse 19. Hear this. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and it's now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming. He who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Take your seat. John chapter 14, verses 19 through 26. I got a question. I got a question I want to ask you today. As we grab hold of the moment that's in front of us, and be honest, is worship a priority for you? I mean, really, is worship a priority for you? When you really begin to think about worshiping God in moments like these, is it a priority? Well, let me help you real quick think through this, right? Because Maybe you're like, yeah, it's a priority for me, but let me tell you something. If you don't experience moments like this Monday through Wednesday, then worship probably not a priority for you. Interesting thing is that I like reading biographies, y'all, and I remember reading about a guy named Howard Hughes. He was an actor turned pilot turned millionaire who ended up spending around $300 million rebuilding the Vegas Strip. He had so many accomplishments in his life, but Michaela, that's not what got me, though. What got me was actually when he died. When this billionaire died, his company's public relations director asked all of the casinos, right, that Howard Hughes owned, right? They said, we want to show him some respect. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a moment, 60 seconds, take one minute of our time, and we're going to honor him. We're going to honor his life. We're going to honor his legacy. So what they did at these casinos is for an uncomfortable 60 seconds, the casinos fell silent. After 60 good seconds, the pit boss looked at his watch, leaned forward, 
and whispered, okay, roll the dice. This man has had his minutes. The more and more, Black Mike, I really began to think about that, it made me think about church. It made me think about church folk, right, who treat God as, uh, as those gamblers in Las Vegas treated Howard Hughes. We interrupt our busy schedules once a week, rush into the church to give God the greatest 60 minutes of our life, and then forget about him and get back to what we would much rather be doing in the first place. We treat God like they treated Howard Hughes by watching our clock. Well, certainly the preacher don't need to preach too long. The worship team better not sing not one more song. But wait a minute, believer. I thought you gathered to worship God. You mean to tell me you can be at work for eight hours but can't worship God for two? Am I saying that um, um, we shouldn't work for eight hours? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying get your priorities together. Is worship a priority for you? Here's what I need you to know is that God created us. Like, like what just happened, Mike? God created us for moments like that. Hear this, not just on Sundays, but Monday through Saturday. God created us for the ultimate priority to give him worship. I know you're trying to figure out what your purpose is, right? You done read Rick Warren's book many different times, right? Trying to run, run and figure out what the end going to be. Well, let me tell you, God created you to worship him. And if you're doing anything else, you're not living on purpose. God created us to worship him. God created us for the ultimate priority of worshiping him. See, those of us who belong to Jesus, right, worship should be a priority for us. And God, our father, our creator, our king, God is seeking true worshipers who, as the scripture says, must worship him. How? In spirit and in truth. And let me tell you this, that must be a priority for you. Well, pastor, I don't lift my hands. I don't cry. All right, there's many ways to worship. Worship with your life. See, before we, before we y'all can really become true worshipers, I think that there's a disconnect as to really what worship really is. See, because for too long, we thought that worship was your favorite slow song. We thought that worship was a genre of music that you listen to. Right? We thought, we, we thought that worship is something that we come to. Right. But let me tell you this. Worship is not what you come to. You, you don't come to worship. Worship comes to you. Yes. Hear this. Before we can become true worshipers, we got to know what worship is. Worship is a is an inner attitude. Right. Do you know that some one of the reasons why people have a bad outer attitude is because worship haven't impacted their inner attitude? Worship is an inner attitude. Worship is a feeling of awe, reverence, gratitude, and love toward God, resulting from a realization of who God is and who he's called us to be. See, worship is loving God. Worship is honoring God. Worship is knowing God for who he is. Worship is adoring him. Worship is obeying him. Worship is proclaiming Jesus as a way of life. Worship is praise. It's devotion. And we give it to God, not only for what he's able to do, but simply because of who he is. See, we've adopted rhythms of life that the only time we want to give God worship is when he gives us what we want. Let me tell you this. God is not a genie. Believer, we have to stop expecting God what discipline and good credit scores can do and expect God to be God. God, let me tell you, see, we worship God because he gives nice houses and cars. Let me tell you this. God does not specialize in giving houses and cars. He specializes in saving sin sick folk. And because he moved and breathed on us enough to save us, that should invoke us to worship. Let me tell you, true worshipers don't need to be pumped and primed. True worshipers don't need no cheerleaders. True worshipers don't need nobody telling them what, to, what they need to do. Because when, you know, they used to say back in the day, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, say it. Hallelujah. Thank the, Lord. Thank the Lord for saving me. See, true worshipers don't need a reminder of how to worship because simply when they think about God, it pushes them to worship. Hear this. Hear this. Hear this. Knowing, see, knowing that God created us for the ultimate priority to worship. See, I would argue that we have a worship problem. Hear this. We have a worship problem because we have a priority problem. We have a worship problem because we have a priority problem. See, hear this. It's not that we don't love God. I, I, 
would argue it's not that we don't desire God or, or that we don't want to reverence him. I, I would argue today, Reverend Forbes, that it's not that we don't adore him. It's just that we honor ourselves more. We worship ourselves more. We adore ourselves more. We reverence ourselves more. We have adopted and promoted rhythms of self-promotion over God glorification. It's a sad reality that we talk more about ourselves on our Facebook pages than we do about Jesus. But then when we challenged about the amount of time we spend on Facebook, we talk about we just trying to raise awareness. Let me tell you something. I would much rather raise awareness about Jesus than my business any day. If that hits you wrong, say, ouch, let the word do the work. But hear this. We must worship God. We have become a people that we want preference, our own preference over the person of Christ. Let me tell you this. I'm so glad that Jesus didn't die for his preference. Let me tell you something about, something about the Lord. The Lord overlooked his preference for us to be in relationship with him, but we can't overlook ours, so we leave in churches over preference. We leave in discipleship relationships over preference, right? We counsel and stuff over preference, right? The church has been the main ones breathing into this council culture over preference. Let me tell you, do you know if the Lord would have leaned into his preference, all of us would have been dead? But he... But, he didn't even, he didn't only overlook his preference, but hear this, he gave his life. He gave his life. He, he overlooked it, right? How did he give his life? Because of sin. His preference was for his people to be pure. But even though, right, we pursued things that were unpure, he still said, come unto me. All who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We have adopted and promoted rhythms where we, we fall more in love with what we can do for ourselves versus what God has already done. It's interesting. We go to prophets and psychics and read all of these tarot cards, want to know what tomorrow looks like. But the Lord has already told us. He already told us what tomorrow holds for the blood ball. We're just not comfortable with it because our priorities are out of whack. We have a worship problem, y'all, because we have a priority problem. And family, it's time for us to get our priorities in order. God created us for the ultimate priority to worship him. Let me ask you, how important is worship to you? I'm like, really, how, how important is it? Does it even bother you that worship is something that needs to be reset? Does it affect you at all that there may be a chance that as much as you say you love God, there could be a chance that you've allowed the things around you to dictate how you worship God? Like, think about it, think about it just for just a quick minute, right? If worship, if how we worship God is predicated upon who God is, why does the things that happen in our life dictate how we worship? What is it that's throwing your, your worship rhythms off track? See, many of us would answer different ways. Life circumstances is distracting my worship. Loneliness is distracting my worship. I got money problems. That's distracting my worship. I'm having marital problems. That's distracting my worship. My grief is distracting my, work, my worship. Or how about we just use the common excuse? COVID pandemic is distracting my worship. And listen, while all of that could be very true, no matter what it is that has you distracted, none of it is more powerful than God, nor does it have the wherewithal to take the place, take the place of who God is in your life. What am I saying? Nothing in this world should distract you from purpose and your main purpose God created you for the ultimate priority to worship him believer it's time for us to remove distractions right they will always happen but we must know that our inner attitude toward the father should always fuel us to give him the reference that the reverence that he deserves see hear this y'all worshiping God is a big deal it's a big deal. It's so much of a big deal. Over 8,000 times in Scripture, we, was told, we were told to worship. Over 8,000 times. But can I just give you a couple that I just love that kind of hit the nail on the head? Well, even if you would have said no, I was telling you anyway. Come here, um, Hebrews 12. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus, let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. He deserves our worship. In your own time, I want to encourage you, right? Read Psalms 95. You want to know how to worship? Read Psalm 95. 
right? You want to be pushed to worship? Read Psalms 100, right? Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve him with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us. We are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture, right? I love in verse 4, it tells us how. He says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. God created us with the ultimate priority to worship God. But see, we're supposed to worship God. That's our priority. But here in this text, we find Jesus having a conversation with a Samaritan woman about worship. Now, as we know, you can look at this text. You can find evangelism sermons, as, so, as Pastor Baker so eloquently preached several weeks ago, right, talking about re-engaging the city, looking at this text. It, uh, just in case you were wondering, well, somebody not in context, either Pastor Baker or Pastor Burr, somebody not in context. No, we all in context because evangelism is worship. Right, and if you don't believe that, let's talk about it. Isn't it interesting how we always talk about worship, but we think about music, but we talk about worship and we never think about evangelism? It's interesting, right? Jesus here in John 4 is having a conversation with this Samaritan woman about worship. Now, I'm going to tell you something, right? This stirs me, Sister Nisi. It stirs me to think about how Jesus here in John 4 was having a conversation with a Samaritan woman about worship because in his time, in his culture at that time, that was against the rules. He shouldn't have been talking to a woman, let alone a Samaritan woman, right? But Jesus was willing to break all cultural norms to get to her heart. Can I just stick a pen right there and tell you that ain't no different from what he's doing right now? Jesus is breaking all kind of cultural norms, right? Not to give you a bigger house, not to give you a bigger car, but his desire is to get to your heart. The problem is that we treat our relationship with Jesus like a scary movie. Instead of running to Jesus, we run from him, close the door, and put a dresser behind it. But here's the joy, the shout material, right? And, and that's what God is that he has the power to pull doors off hinges. And no matter what he got to do to get to your heart, he going to get to it. What am I saying? Stop blocking God from your heart and give it to him. If he don't have your heart, he does not have you. God created us for the ultimate priority to worship him. He was having a conversation about worship. She was like, the Jews worship at Jerusalem. And the Samaritans, Jesus, they worship at Mount Gerizim. But Jesus, he had revealed it. He's like, I know about all your men. It's another word we use, but I can't use that no more. I'm delivered. He knew about her husbands, as well as the fact that the man she lived with wasn't even her husband. I wonder whose name can we plug in right there? You either the woman or you the man. But here's the deal. Jesus knew about it. Just like he knew about her stuff, he knew about yours too. But the joy in it is, is that he's still pursuing you. Who wouldn't worship a God like that? Jesus knew her story and that made her uncomfortable. See, the fact that Jesus knows our story make us uncomfortable too. Somebody telling my business. Let me Google my name and see what come up first. He do know your business. Let me tell you how he knows your business because he's your creator. It made her uncomfortable, so, so, so she attempted. So, so in her discomfort, in her discomfort, Sister Trace, she tried to change the subject. Can we talk about something else? Right? He started calling her out, and she was like, did you see that football game? <laughs> Trying to change the subject. She wanted to, ver to divert his attention from her personal life to start having theological conversations. See, that's the problem even with today because now people love theology more than they love Jesus. When you really begin to talk about the, the intricate details of them living their theology, right, they want to hide it. All they want to do is talk about it and quote all these different theological terms. Who cares? Does he have your heart? Right? She wanted to change the conversation from talking about personal matters of life uh, to religion. But Jesus didn't want to be distracted from his lesson on true worship. And he got right to the heart of the matter. He said the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Jesus began to address her about this matter, y'all, because he knew that those around her and her had began to worship half-heartedly. Why would they worship her half-heartedly? Because their total affection was not set on God. See, we tend to look at others and turn our noses up at them about how they worship God. But the truth is, y'all, is that we may not assent 
to have a physical idols like the Samaritan did, like the Samaritans did. But here's a question for you. Here's something I want you to consider. What absorbs your will? Like what absorbs your time? What, what is it that absorbs your resources most of, mo- most of the time? Is it your career? Is it your material possessions? Is it your money? Is it your health? Is it your family? Like I'm going to tell you something. That which you place before God is what or who you worship. Whatever you place before God, that's what you worship. Now, now let me be clear. I ain't talking about church attendance. I'm not, I'm not talking about church attendance. Let, let, me, let, let me say this. Church attendance is an act of worship. While I'm here, can I just be pastoral real quick? Giving is an act of worship. You're going to get a chance to give and worship in a minute, right? But, but it's all an act of worship. And, and, but, but when I say that, like what we place before God, right, um, I'm talking about our relationship with God. See, some of us, right, we don't, we don't value our relationship with God because we make excuses. I don't have the time. It's funny that we don't have the time to worship the one who give us the time. But hear this. God is seeking true worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Therefore, we must make worshiping God a priority. See, worship is not confined to what we do in church or in an open space, right? True worship is really is the acknowledgement of God and all his power and glory and everything that we do. Hear this. Worship is not a style. Worship is not a genre. Can I just even be clear today, Miss Maddie? Worship for the believers is not even an option. The believer should never think of, am I going to worship today? I just don't feel like it. I mean, what am I going to do? Worship for the believer shouldn't be an option for the blood ball. Well, if it's not an option, whatever, it's a way of living for the blood ball. And listen, when you know who God is and reflect on what he has done and is doing and will do, that ought to fuel you to worship. Hear this. God created us for the ultimate pri- with the ultimate priority to worship him. But if you want to make worship a priority right here in this text, right, right here in this text, in Jesus' conversation with the Samaritan woman, y'all, we see three very important truths that we can take from here. He shows us, right, number one, right, if you want to make worship a priority, you, you got to know who's supposed to worship. You got to know who's supposed to worship. What I love, y'all, about this text, when it talks about um, who will worship, showing us who will worship, he was clear. He, he didn't leave us with no questions. Watch what he says here. But the hour is coming. And now it's here when the true worshipers will worship him in spirit and in truth. Listen, y'all, true worshipers are all those everywhere who worship God through the Son from the heart. Can I just tell you for y'all super deep, y'all super deep folks, there's no way you can worship God and ignore Jesus. I don't know who that's for, right? But, but maybe that's for you. You know what? It's, it's never for us. It's always for our Facebook friends. So let me tell you. Tell your Facebook friends that there's no way you can worship God and not, not, and not worship the real Jesus. Right? See, see, we, see, see Pastor Becker, we've created Jesus in our mind. Some folks just believe that Jesus is just another prophet. Some believe that he was just old dude from around the way. But hear this, right? Jesus is the Messiah, right? And true worshipers are all those everywhere who worship God through the Son from the heart. Do you know that worship is a heart posture? Worship speaks to the position of your heart. Now, now hear this, y'all. That amazes me. It amazes me, y'all. It amazes me because as Jesus conversed with this Samaritan woman, y'all, he made a distinction of who the worshipers should be. He didn't just say worshipers. Right, they could have left it wide open. But he knew, right, that some of us would be too smart for our own good and need details. Like, if I need details, I already told y'all. If I need details, I ask. Right, but Jesus didn't want to leave anything up for question. So he made a distinction. He didn't just say worshiper. He said true worshiper. See, that means something, right? See, the fact, can I just tell you, the fact that God seeks true worshipers gives the implication that there's false worshipers. For him to say true worshipers, it gives the impression, the implication that there's false worshipers. See, hear this, false worshipers, y'all, either worship something other than God or they may attempt to worship the true God but do it in ways that dishonor him. But either way, either way, hear this, sincerity, y'all, is not the only criteria for measuring true worship. 
I need you to hear this, though. Sincerity is not the only criteria for measuring true worshiper. See, see, all true worshipers are sincere, but all sincere worshipers are not true. All true worshipers are sincere, but all sincere worshipers are not true. Here it is, y'all. There are some devout, sincere worshipers of Allah, devout worshipers of Christ, Christmas, right? Devout worshipers of Buddha or even the Mormon God or some people just even made up their own God, right? There's, there's some sincere worshipers of the Jehovah's Witnesses God, but they are, while they are sincere in worshiping their God, hear this, they are, they are also sincerely wrong. Right, they they worship uh, they worship sincerely, but they sincerely wrong because they are not worshiping the only living true God who has revealed Himself in Scripture. Well, Pastor, that ain't me. That ain't me, right? That ain't me. I worship the God of the Scriptures. It's funny that in the church they say they worship the God in the Scriptures, but we got to pump and prime you to worship the God of the Scriptures. If you got to be pumped and primed to worship the God of the Scriptures, who you say you worship, you don't know the God of the Scriptures. I don't worship anything else or anyone else. And why you? And, and that may be true, right? You may not worship any other quote-unquote gods, but th- there are some people who worship themselves. Worship yourselves. There, there, there's these Christians, y'all, who are sincere, but their worship is man-centered. Sometimes, y'all, that's patterned more after the entertainment world than the scriptures. We, we want worship that draws our attention to the performer. What does that look like? The only time we worship is when we sing our favorite Travis Green song. Right? We, we have become a culture of people, right, who, whose worship is defined off of how we move and shake. Black church. I don't like the black church. I don't like the way they worship. They too loud. Right? They too loud. Maybe, maybe, let me tell you this. Maybe they ain't loud enough. Because I'm going to tell you something. Right, it's a problem when the neighbors don't, when the neighbors can't hear what's going on in, uh, uh, on the inside of your church. Because if we really knew the God of the Scriptures, do you know that we would want to scream, we would want to lose our voice, lose our mind in worship because He's so much more greater. We gotta know who God is, and I'm gonna tell you, y'all, Christian. There's another end of this Christian spectrum, y'all. Some go through service week after week, but their hearts are not in submission to God. They mistakenly think that because they went through rituals, they're good for another week. Because I sat in church, because I said his name with everybody else, because I lifted my hands when they were singing, I danced to the beat, so I I, I know I'm good. I know my worship is true, but here's what I want to share with you today. If your heart isn't submitted to God, your worship is not true, and you are not a true worshiper. Jesus said in Matthew 15, he said, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. What am I saying? There's a way to honor God with your lips and your heart be far away. God is seeking true worshipers, y'all, who worship him in spirit and in truth, and we got to make worship a priority. Y'all listen. God created us with the ultimate priority, with the ultimate priority to worship him. And the only ones, hear this, the only ones who can really worship God is true worshipers. Those who, no matter what life looks like, will obey him and not indulge in their own lust. God is actively seeking men and women who will eagerly worship him according to the truth of the scripture and by the power of his spirit. God desires true worship, or are you one of them? Not only, not only number one, should we grasp the fundamental principle that true worshipers must worship, who will worship, but number two, right, we got to grasp why we worship. Now, if you ain't got no notebook out, right, like you need to tattoo this on your heart, on your hand or something, right? Because believer, you can never forget why we worship in the first place. See, the story of the Samaritan woman, right, re, it really reinforces John's main theme that Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of God. See, the thrust of these verses, y'all, is not so much her conversion, but that Jesus is the Messiah, right? We can see and we should be excited 
right, about the conversion of the Samaritan woman. But we can't get so distracted with her conversion that we miss her converter. See, see, that's what we tend to do. See, see we, want, we want conversion because we want to see butts in seats. We want conversion because we like to see a lot of people. But do you know that we've become a people where we focus so much on the conversion that we miss the converter? Yeah. Right? See, see, here's what he says. Here's what he says. Watch what he says in the text. Right? God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. See, that helps us to see why we worship. We worship because of who Jesus is. We worship because he's the Messiah. He's the anointed one. He's the savior of the world. He did for us what we could not do for ourselves. That ought to fuel our worship. We worship not because of what he's done, but simply because of who he is. Well, Pastor Mike, who is he? Jesus did something amazing. Jesus established his kingdom by acting as both a mediating priest and a priestly sacrifice. He lived a perfect life, died on the cross, fulfilling the law himself, taking on himself the punishment for the sins of many. Oh, I know y'all don't like a whole lot of words. This is faith community. Bible church. Well, let me give you scripture. Come here, Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Right? Come here, Hebrews chapter 7, for it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need like those high priests to offer sacrifices daily for his own sins and then for those of the people, right? Since he did this once for all when he offered up himself. Okay, that ain't good enough. Y'all ain't shouting loud enough. Come here, um, Philippians chapter 2, he exalted himself, right? Um, by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross, and at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, and every tongue on heaven and earth shall confess. You want to know why you worship? It's because of who Jesus is, right? Come here, um, Romans 4, right? Uh, 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 it, it will be counted to us who believe righteousness. Why? Because of what Jesus did on the cross, Jesus Christ. Fully God, fully man, lived a sinless life, died on the cross to bear God's wrath in the place of who believe in him and hear this, rose from the grave with all power in his hands. If that ain't reason enough, nothing will be. We worship because of who he is. Hear this. Jesus is our Messiah. He's our Savior. He's our King. He created us for the, with the ultimate priority to worship him. Let me tell you, family, we got to worship him not only for what he's done, but because of who he is. And when you know who Jesus is, worship ought to give you joy. I'm wondering today. I don't ever want to know, Lady Melinda, what it feels like to be a part of a joyless church. A joyless church is a church that has taken their eyes off Jesus. Do you know the, the reason why many people who profess to be in relationship with Jesus don't get excited about Jesus because they took their eyes off Jesus? And do you know that if you take your eyes off Jesus long enough, you'll, you'll forget how you should be affectionate toward Jesus? It's going to be hard to, to be reminded of who he is when you live your life like you don't care who he is. I'm going to remind you of something that I said right several weeks ago. Here it is, right? Living the Christian life is not about us living for Jesus. It's not. Can I just tell you, right, that's how we fail. Because we thought that we were supposed to live for Jesus. But we got the equation wrong, right? I wonder if I was to have a conversation with a math teacher, right? What would she say to me if I was her student and put the equations in the wrong place? Right, you, you put the equation in the wrong place, yeah, it's a math teacher in the building. You're going to get the wrong answer, right? But see, worship, living for Jesus, right, you have to have the proper equation. See, living the Christian life is not about us living for Jesus, but hear this, it's about Jesus living his life through us. And when we have, uh, when we allow Jesus to live his life through us, then worship won't be a drag. 
When you allow Jesus to live his life through you, then worship won't, won't be a pr the pressing of a reset button. Worship is going to be something that, right, you're going to pull other people into. Because I'm going to tell you, there's no way that you can have a two-hour long conversation with a believer and not hear Jesus' name not once. Because he's living his life through him. Y'all, I'm going to tell you something, right? Some of my friends, right, some of my friends was on vacation, right? And they was talking about, right, uh, uh, many different things under the sun. But it was one friend who just kept on bringing up Jesus, even. It, be it dancing, be it woo, Jesus, whatever the case may be, there's no way that Jesus can be living his life through you and you not mention Jesus. Let me tell you something. You want to be a genuine worshiper and worship him because of who he is. Amen. You got to know. Amen. We worship him because of who he is. And hear this. Hear this, y'all. I got to go. Hear this. True worship is not confined to what we do in this church. If the only time you worship God is here on Sundays, you got a problem. You got a problem, right? Can I just tell you that if, you, if worship was a way of living for you and not just something you did, your life Monday through Saturday might be different. It, it just might be. Because think about it. If all you focused your attentions on was living a life to glorify the Father, that means that you're talking to him frequently He'll tell you what decisions you need to make. I ain't saying that, some, that life ain't going to happen. I ain't saying it ain't going to be difficult. But what I am saying is that he'll direct your path. That, that's what the words say. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. True worship is not confined to what we do in church, right? Um, true worship is the acknowledgement of God and all his power and glory in everything we do. Worship is to glorify and exalt God to show our loyalty and admiration to him as our father, y'all. We must make worship in Jesus a priority in our heart. And let me tell you this. God is looking for true worshipers. If God was to step foot in here right now and begin to grab true worshipers, will he grab you or will he say, depart from me, I never knew you? Many of us have professing, have been professing Jesus with our mouths, living our life, climbing the ladder, only to get to the top of the ladder to realize that our ladder is leaning towards the wrong building. All because we're worshiping God with an empty heart. But there's three fundamentals, three fundamentals here. Number one, we got to know who's supposed to worship. He says true worshipers. Those who will worship no matter what life looks like. Those who will obey him no matter how difficult things may be. Do you know that his commands are not burdensome? We got to know not only who should worship, true worshipers. Number two, why we worship. We worship him because he's the Messiah. He's the anointed one. Jesus is the savior of the world. He did for us what we can do for ourselves, right? Um, Romans 5, 8, I love it. He says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. That's why we worship. And finally, y'all, if we are to be true worshipers, we must grasp, here it is, how we are to worship. How we are to worship. He says in the text. Here's what he says in the text. True worshipers. Must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. See, true worship, hear this, true worship must be in spirit, y'all. And, and, and when he says in spirit, he's not at all talking about the Holy Spirit there. He's not talking about the Holy Spirit. Now, just in case you say, yep, I love this church. We box out the Holy Spirit. No, that ain't what we're doing. Right. When he's talking about the spirit right there, he's talking about engaging your whole heart. How does he engage your whole heart through the person and work of the Holy Spirit? Right. True worship must be in spirit. That's engaging a whole heart. Hear this. Unless there's a real passion for God, unless there's a real passion for God, there is no worship in spirit. At the same time, y'all, worship must be in truth. Y'all. And that's. That, that means that um, you, you are properly informed about the one you're worshiping. See, unless we have acknowledged, uh, unless, unless we have knowledge of the God we worship, there is no worship in truth. Why, how would we even want to worship a God that we know nothing about? Can I just tell you, right, that's why we have midweek. That's why we have growth groups. That's why we plug discipleship, because we don't want you to grow in a God you don't know nothing about. Right? Uh, everything that we do around her is pointing you to him. 
right? Let me tell you this. We got enough going on. We want you to learn to trust in Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, right? We want you to learn to worship God in spirit and in truth. See, hear this, y'all. Spirit without truth leads to a shadow, overly emotional experience that can be compared to a high. Come on, y'all act like y'all ain't never been high before. You mess around and get high, right? Eat up everything in your house and then wonder, I just went grocery shopping yesterday where all the food go. You ate it all. Right? But here's the thing. As soon as the emotion is over, y'all, when the fervor cools, so does your worship. Right? That's why we find ourselves getting high one kind of way, and then when it calms down, we're trying to find another high. Because, we, because we, we've learned to fall in love with temporary feelings instead of eternal gratitude. We love the temporary Right? We love the temporary so much so that we've become a church accustomed to giving people temporary. All right, let me make it clear. Black parties, that's all temporary. Hot dogs gonna wear off. Random acts of kindness, that's all temporary. It's gonna wear off. Right? But if we want to see genuine change, we have to offer something eternal. Well, what is it eternal? It's Jesus. We have to give something eternal. Right? As soon as all of these emotions is over and the fervor cools, our, our, our worship diminishes. Why? Because we demote worship to a song and not a person. Truth without spirit can result in a dry, passionless encounter, y'all, that can easily lead to a form of joyless legalism. But the best combination of both aspects of worship results, y'all, in a joyous appreciation of God informed by his truth. What is his truth? It's the scriptures, y'all. The more we know about God, the more we appreciate him. The more we appreciate him, the deeper our worship. The deeper our worship, the more our God is glorified. Hear this. True worship is not limited to a physical location, whether a church or whatever the case may be. Worship takes place in the human heart, the human, um, the human spirit, and is not confined to any particular holy place. Hear this. If the only time you worship is on Sundays, you don't miss it all together. God created us for the ultimate priority to worship him. Now what's amazing about this passage of scripture y'all is that the woman put her faith in Christ and she was converted. Immediately y'all she went to go share her faith with others. She went to the village and told all the folks who was denying her before hey I met Jesus. See when you can, when, when you really consider how little spiritual truth this woman knew. Her zeal and her witness ought to put us to shame. Because we don't, we don't want to be disciple makers. Because we don't know enough. We don't want to be intentionally evangelistic, right? Because what if? We don't want to even stretch our life rhythms to be more than what they really are because we got other things to do. But certainly, if Jesus can break cultural norms to engage this woman's heart, we can break our schedule to see people come to Jesus. Certainly, we can break our schedule so that we can be able to grow in Christ. See, our responsibility, y'all, hear this. The responsibility of true worshipers is to, the responsibility of true worshipers is to go out and seek true worshipers. That's what God is looking for. God is seeking true worshipers who worship him in spirit, meaning with everything that we have and all that's within us. He's looking for people who will worship him in truth according to his word, which is truth. And that must be a priority for us, y'all. And hear this, y'all. As soon as our emotion is over and the fervor cools, y'all, we, we, we find our worship diminishing. But if your worship is built on Jesus, right, your worship will last if your worship is built on Jesus, you won't run. If your worship is built on who God is, you will understand that worship is not an option for you. Truth without spirit, y'all, um, is not true worship. But the more we know about God, the more we appreciate him, the more we um, 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 appreciate him, the deeper our worship goes. The deeper our worship goes, the more our God is glorified. And I just promise you today, right, to worship God is to know 
who God is. And when you know God to be trustworthy, you're going to want to worship him. When you know God to be the rewarder of those who wait for him, you're going to want to worship God. The more and more you know God to be a faithful God to his own, you're going to want to worship him. The more and more you know God to be the God of your salvation, you will want to worship him. The more and more you experience the compassionate grace of God, the more and more you will want to worship him. The more and more you know that God is filled with loving kindness, you will want to worship him. When you experience God as a forgiver, meaning, watch this, he remembers you and not your sin, you will want to worship God. When you know God to be an upright God, you will want to worship him. When you know God to be the instructor of sinners, you will want to worship him. When you know God to be the provider of justice for the humble, the teacher of the humble, a companion to the lonely, a caretaker for the afflicted, a guardian and a deliverer, a refuge. When you know God to be a redeemer, your only response will be to worship him. What's distracting you? Let me tell you. Well, if you, it's, it's interesting. I got four kids. Darren, I got four kids, and I love all six of them. I do. This was amazing, though. One thing that grinds my gears, Carl, I don't like to tell them what to do more than once. I'm gracious, though, Pastor. I'm gracious. I'm gracious. Spread a rod for the child. I whoop them, but I, you know. But I don't like to tell them what to do over and over and over again. It drives me crazy. I don't like repeating myself. Somebody say, how come you don't like, to, how come you don't like repeating yourself? Because I don't like the sound of my own voice. I just want to say it one time. Yeah. Right? So when I got to repeat myself and constantly tell them the same thing over and over and over and over again, it drives me crazy. I wonder what does God think about us? Right. How many times did he have to keep telling you, worship me? Yeah. Worship me. Yeah. Worship me. Yeah. Submit to me. Worship me. Go get my people worship me. Go fish and worship me. Before he just said, hey, you keep on asking me to do stuff, but you ain't told me what I, you ain't did what I told you to do in the first place. He's calling us to worship him. And it's a sad reality, y'all. We should never, believers should never have to press the reset button on worship. We shouldn't. I'm thankful that we serve a God who don't restart. Okay, scripture says it this way. He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So here's the question. Come on, band, worship team, whoever coming. Here's the question. Is worship a priority for you? What has you distracted? Can I just tell you that we can't keep on blaming stuff on COVID? I don't know if you watch the news lately, but COVID ain't going nowhere. You can't keep on making excuses. It's, it's funny. Folks won't even come to church in person, but they're going on vacations and going to Walmart and all of that stuff. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I came on one today. But we got to stop making excuses. We got to stop putting other things before God and get our priorities in order. Worship is a problem because our priorities are a problem. But it's time for us to get things back on track. If you find a hard time worshiping God, maybe you, you, I ain't saying you ain't got no relationship with him, but maybe you're just trying, you having a hard time with rhythms of worship in your life. Why don't you come? I'm going to pray with you. I promise I ain't going to lay hands because I'm sweaty, but I'm going to pray. Do you know the only difference between you and everybody else is that you need the courage to admit it. There's no perfect person in this room. Maybe you're having a difficult time, right? If, if, you, if you're afraid to come up by yourself, then grab your neighbor's hand. Grab your neighbor's hand. Let's, let's pray together. You don't have to keep on making excuses or be discouraged about how, you, about how your life is just thrown off track. But let me tell you this. God is gracious, and he's ready to walk it out with you every step of the way. But listen, you got to let him. Come on, you don't have to be afraid to come. Let me be the first, because my worship rhythms are thrown off. I'm turning my back and facing the front.
We cannot continue to call ourselves a church and not worship our Savior. The only second promise to us is the one that just passed. But with this one, we got to get our worship right. We got to get our priorities in check. Because hear this. That's our priority. Maybe you're here and you can't worship because you don't know Jesus as your Savior. Maybe you're watching this online and you just want to know how to have a relationship with Jesus. I'm going to ask you to do something for us today. Go to our website, fcbcstl.com forward slash respond. Check the box. Let us know. Hey, I want to know what it looks like to have a relationship with Jesus. We'll reach out to you. We'll have a conversation with you. Maybe you're here on location and you just like, I just don't, I don't want to go to the website. Well, pull myself or Pastor Baker to the side. We would love to chat with you. Another way to worship today is through giving. FCBCSTL.com forward slash give. Or as you walk out here in a little bit, it's a, it's a box in the back. You can drop your gift there. But understand this. Worship is the priority for the blood bond. And we cannot continue to ignore it. Let's get our priorities together. And worship God alone. Father, we bless you. We honor you, Jesus. We adore you, King. We make you big. Because the truth is, Lord, life has its way of distracting us. Life has its way of causing us to question everything. But today, we're asking you, first and foremost, for forgiveness. Forgive us, Lord, for erecting our own idol. Forgive us, Lord, for even idolizing our time. We beg you, Jesus, to forgive us for not giving you what's due you. Today, I pray for discipline. Discipline, God, to keep all things in its proper perspective. That you will take your proper place in our heart. God, I'm asking you today that you will breathe on my brothers and sisters at this altar. Lord, that they will be encouraged to know, Lord, that you are not removing your hand from them. But that, God, you are helping them to see who you are. That you are giving yourself away unto us. That you are living your life through us, God. That we will not continue to abandon our priority to give your name glory. God, I'm praying today. That you will deliver our worship team from being cheerleaders. But that they will be people who invite us into worship. Deliver us, God, from a people who come to worship. But live lives of worship. It's not a genre. It's not about the way we lift our hands or the way we sing, but it's about keeping our hearts and minds fixed on you. But Father, we want you to know that we're grateful that you have a way of reminding us not only of who you are, but, but what our response should be to who you are. 
Thank you for making us new, for helping us to know that you are with us and you will never leave nor forsake us. Father, we love you. We honor you. We adore you. We magnify you, Lord. We make you big. Because you and you alone deserve all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, and especially our worship. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for hearing our prayer. It's in your name we pray. Amen. As we end today, y'all listen. I want to remind y'all. I want to remind y'all that worship is our priority. If there is anything in your life that, that has you distracted from worship, it means that God is not in a proper place in your life. Let's get it together. All of us, not just y'all, me included, let's get it together. Because worship is our ultimate priority. want to remind you all Several things going on over the next couple of weeks. Hopefully you guys have marked your calendars for July 24th, two weeks from yesterday. You, you will get a message here soon, or, or the next few days, about what exactly we're doing that day. On uh, July 24th, we're going to do something church-wide that day. And we want everybody to be a part of it. Also, those going on the Chicago mission trip, you've already got the text Right? Another message will be going out to you in the next couple of days, and we need you to confirm whether you're actually going now that you have the details. Because we want to finalize that in the next couple of days. But all of the things that we do, y'all, listen to this. It's all worship. We're just pointing to Jesus. And we're inviting you to be a part of it. We love you all. God bless you, and God keep you as our prayer. Have a great rest of the day.